So today what I want to do, and actually for the first couple of days, I'm going to introduce topics that I know are really simple for you. But I want to talk about one of the more basic topics in math, but it's also what I've found to be one of the more misunderstood concepts in math. If I put up, well, what we're going to talk about is the concept of a number and what a number is. So if I put a 4 up here, show of hands, how many of you would tell me that that's a number? Yeah, most people would. But what that is, is that is a numeral. And in most cases, it serves as a complete number, but it really isn't. It is simply an amount. To be a complete number, we must tell not only how much, not only the amount, but what it is that we have. For example, you might have four cows. So this number has two parts. It has that amount, in this case the four, which I'm going to call the count. It tells us how much. But it also tells us what it is we have four of. In this case, the cows, which I'm going to refer to as the name. Now you might be thinking, oh no, here's another one of those math teachers that's going to make us label everything or he's going to mark it wrong. That's not my purpose. Um, I'm, not, I'm not real uptight about making sure you have labels on it. But since this is a math, uh, math for health professionals class, a medical math class, I am a little bit pickier than normal on that. You do have to make sure you know, is it milliliters or microliters? That can make a big difference to a patient. So we do have to have label, labels, and we do have to be concerned with it in some cases. So anyway, since I've made a big deal about a number having two parts, let's look at what it means to our two most basic math operations. So we'll look at addition and multiplication. As I'm sure most of you know, addition and, or, uh, addition and subtraction are really the same operation. So subtraction doesn't have its own rules or its own definition. It's really part of addition. So anything we discuss for addition also applies for subtraction as far as the basic rules. And the same with multiplication and division. Division is just a byproduct of multiplication. So any rules we have for multiplication also apply for division. So let's take a peek at an addition problem here. Let's do like four inches plus seven inches. And what do we get? 11 inches. Perfect. If you look at what happened there, with the counts, we have four and seven. We're combined to make 11. We combine the counts. Well, that's not terribly interesting. Let's look at the names. We had inches and inches. And we ended up with inches. So all we did was keep the same name. Well, that's not really earth-shattering information there. Let's look at multiplication, however. Let's say I have 4 inches times 11 inches. What am I going to get? So anyway, with multiplication, 4 inches times 11 inches is going to become, 4 times 11 is 44, but it's going to be inches squared, or square inches. Good. So if we look at what happened here with the counts, we took 4 and 11, and again we combined them to make 44. Well, this time we combined them with multiplication because we're multiplying. So once again, we combine the counts. With the names this time, however, we had inches and inches, and it became square inches. So when we multiply, we also combine the name. We're good. Yep. Thanks. So that doesn't seem like a great deal, a big deal, but... It has a lot of consequences for us as to what numbers we can even use in each of our operations. For example, let's do like five cows plus four boys. Does that give us nine cowboys? No, that doesn't work, right? Or if we did it the other way around, four boys and five cows. 
that give us nine boy cows? Of course not. Any uh, any uh, people that grew up on a farm in here? Couple? You can all tell me that's a bunch of bull, right? Okay. Anyway, long way to go for a joke, but there's a point to it. We can't combine cows and boys with addition because when we add numbers, we're going to keep the same name, which implies that when we add numbers, we must start with the same name. I can add inches to inches or cows to cows or boys to boys, but I can't mix and match. I'm on a more practical side. If I had three feet plus eight pounds, I can't combine that. I get three feet and eight pounds. I can't combine those with addition or subtraction because I have to have the same name to add or subtract numbers. But on multiplication, I, since I'm just going to combine the names, I can take three feet times eight pounds. I'm going to combine the counts. Three times eight is 24. And I'm also going to combine the names. Feet times pounds are foot pounds. For those of you that are mechanically inclined, that's a unit of torque. Um, or uh, in structures, in structural engineering, that would be a unit of moment. So when I multiply, since I'm going to combine the names, I do not need to have the same name. Now again, you might be looking at that thinking it really isn't a big deal. But if we look at some of our other forms of numbers, it explains all of these special rules we have for fractions and decimals and for algebraic expressions. For fractions, for example, of course, the top number is the numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. By the way, I realize I'm a horrible speller and I have poor handwriting sometimes. So if anything ever appears up here and you can't read it, don't be afraid to yell out. Um, I assure you that it was meant to be English. I probably either just spelled it poorly or my handwriting is terrible. I promise I won't be offended. So anyway, numerator and denominator. Well, what does it mean to numerate? Um, every 10 years, our government sends out people to do the census, to numerate the population. What they're doing is counting. Denominator, to denominate. Um, we have different denominations of organizations, different denominations of money. To denominate means to classify or to give a name. So a fraction, even though it looks like two numbers, is really just a single number with two parts. Just like having three inches or three cows, here we have three fourths. The four is not a number, it is the name, it's the label. And when we go to do operations with those, those uh, fractions, for example, let's say we have 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. When we add numbers, first of all, we need the same name. Well, somewhere around third or fourth grade, your teacher told you, when you add fractions, you must have a common denominator. That's not a new rule. It's the same rule that we have for adding any type of number. Also, you were taught that when you add fractions, once you have the common denominator, you combine the counts. Add the numerators. 2 plus 3 is 5. And you keep the common denominator of 7. Again, that's not a special rule for fractions. That's how we add any number. You combine the counts and you keep the same name. Multiplying fractions. 2 sevenths times 3 sevenths. You were taught to just multiply straight across. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 times 7 is 49. Again, that's not a special rule for fractions. That's how we would multiply any number. Combine the counts and then also combine the names. If I have 1 third plus 1 fourth. Can I add those the way they are written? No, we have to find the common denominator and rename them. But for multiplication, 1 third times 1 fourth would not be a problem. 
because when we multiply, we don't need the same names. We're just going to multiply the counts. 1 times 1 is 1, and also multiply the names. 3 times 4 is 12. So as you can see, all those special rules we learned for fractions are not new rules at all. They're the same rules we have for whole numbers. They just look different because fractions look a little bit different. We could also talk about decimals. 0.21. What's the technical way of pronouncing that? Just go ahead and yell it out. 21 hundredths. Perfect. Thank you. And when you write it that way, it's pretty obvious to see that there is a count and a name here. So if I were going to add numbers like 0.21 plus 0.3, if I go to add that, is this going to work? What's wrong with what I did? What do I have to make sure I do when I add, num when I add decimals? There we go. We have to line up the decimal points. Probably that same third or fourth grade teacher told us you must line up the decimal points when you add decimals. Well, the reason why is this is 21 hundredths. This is 3 tenths. Technically, they don't have the same name. But if I just put that zero there, now that's 30 hundredths. They have the same name. And the decimal points would automatically line up. When we're lining up those decimal points to add decimals, all we're really doing is making sure that they have the same name. And then when we add the decimals, of course, we're taught you add down the column. So 1 and 0 is 1, 2 and 3 is 5. And what do we do with the decimal point? Well, we just bring it straight down. The reason we bring it straight down, well, 21 hundredths and 30 hundredths better be 51 hundredths. We keep the same name when we add. Bringing that decimal point straight down is just keeping the same name. When we multiply, let's say I have 0.21 times 0.3. We don't need to line up the decimal points because when we multiply, we don't need the same name. 21 times 3 is 63. Where does my decimal point go? Talkative group, huh? Don't be camera shy. Where does my decimal point have to go? Three spots over. I have to add a zero and put my decimal point in front of it. The reason we put it three spots over is we've always been taught you count one, two, three decimal places in the problem. You have to have one, two, three decimal places in the answer. Well, it comes back to the question of why. Well, this is 21 hundredths. This is 3 tenths. When we multiply, we not only multiply the counts, so 21 times 3 is 63, but we also multiply the names. Hundredths times tenths is thousandths. So when we're counting those decimal places and making sure we have that many decimal places in our answer, all we're really doing is combining the names. Algebraic numbers are the same way. 3x plus 11x. Okay, so we have 3x plus 11x. We're going to combine the counts. 3 and 11 makes 14, and we keep the same name of x. If I had 5x plus 2y, well, I'm going to end up with simply 5x plus 2y. Just like trying to add the feet to the pounds, I cannot add them because they have different names. Multiplying, however... 3x times 11x, well, just like with the inches, you combine the counts. 3 times 11 is 33, and also combine the names. x times x becomes x squared. And also, just like multiplication with whole numbers, if I'm multiplying 5x times 2y, when I multiply, I do not need the same names. So I multiply the counts. 5 times 2 is 10. I also multiply the names. x times y is xy. Just like feet times pounds became foot pounds. 
I'm going to leave it at that for today. I realize we didn't cover anything today that you guys didn't already know. But hopefully I took some, some different angles on it that maybe make, make you understand why we do some of the things you've been taught to do. Over the next couple of days, that's the way the material is going to be pretty much as review of stuff you already know. But hopefully I'll be able to take a different viewpoint on it that helps you understand it a little better from what you've seen before. With that, there is no homework for today. And I will let you out of here a couple minutes early.